going on down at the allotment then, and this is the shallot area I was preparing. I've used the trusty rotavator because the uh, ground was that hard. I couldn't really get into it. So basically then, I'm ready for fertilising now. So here goes. I've got a bit of a blood fish and bone. Sod's low now, it's starting to get a bit of uh, wind up, which is not ideal, but there you go. So just give that a bit of a dusting over. So I'll give it a dusting over and then I've raked it to a nice fine tilth and then it's just ready for planting the shallots now. So I've done a few already so I'm not going to bore you but basically I just line up on the soil like that about a foot apart and then I just gently just push it in. It's not going to do any damage to the root underneath because it's that fine the soil. Just push it, push it in, cover the cover with, uh, with soil and just leave the, uh, the necks just pointing above the ground a bit like that and then you're just going to have to protect them a bit maybe put over a bit of uh, netting or something of metal frame or whatever you can have to hold a bit of black cotton I've seen people use before reason being is the uh, the blackbirds etc thrushes or whether the birds they'll end up just popping them up I think in the worms so a bit of protection will go a long way to helping them so I'll just give them a good water now and that's it really, let nature take over and hopefully come the summer, late summer you'll have a good crop of shallots. Okay, so we're now on to the potatoes and I've just gone over again with the rotator because I like to make the soil nice and fluffy so it's easier for me to earth up. I earth up straight away as soon as I've planted the potatoes as a, I like to just get things over and done with and let nature just carry on, takes its toll. You know, all the water looks after itself. If I need to water, I will do in dry spells, but I just like to get them over and done with taters because there's that much hard graft involved. I just like to get everything sorted and finished. So anyway, here we go. So I'm using this tool here, and it's basically a trencher. So going parallel with the line, I'll just make a bit of a, a furrow like that, an incision, and plant my potatoes every so often like so. So I'll just get this up, and I'll show you how I'll do it. So now I've got all this trenched out, I use my bulb planter to plant potatoes. It's very simple really, it's just like you do a normal uh, bulb. So I come in about a foot, foot and a half away from the ground, uh, sorry from the side, push down firmly, twist, lift up and then just eject the soil out like so. There we go, one nice hole ready for planting spudding. So I'll get all these done. And I'll show you the end results. These are all bored out now, the holes. I've used my yardage stick which I customised a few years ago. About a foot apart these holes, that's what I do for the new potatoes, that's ample spacing. For the second and main crops I usually put them about 45 centimetres apart. So in this four and a half metre row, I'll get about 11, 12 potatoes out of it. Hit plant these potatoes, sorry. Should be nice, and then, like I say, drop the potato in each one, like so. I'll cover it up and then I'll just sprinkle a bit of chicken manure pellets just in the trench, not allowing the manure just to suck the chicken manure pellets to touch the potato, though. Just give it a nice covering a couple of inches, and then you can sprinkle your fertilizer over and you can cover it over. So, the variety of potatoes I've got this year for the earlies are foremost and penland javelin. Here are the foremost potatoes, so they've got some nice good chits on there. So I usually just rub one of them off, rub one of them off, and then leave the two at the top, because that is where you get the the main shoots growing up from, and then also produce the branches for the tubers, so then come off. So that's it really. It's just standard procedure for planting potatoes. Drop them in the hole, like so. Wherever the chits are, obviously they need to walk forward because they'll they'll produce the uh, the shoots. So you want them upright as best you can. Like I say, I usually allow two two tubers each, uh, two chits each. That's plenty. So 
So I'll finish the rest of those off then. I'll get back with you shortly. So all the potatoes are in now, and all I'll do is just give them a bit of a covering over. Like I say, nothing spectacular. Just enough cover, just to uh, keep it off the chicken manure pellets. Like so. There we go. Hold on. So, as you can see, the trench is still there. So then, what I do? Grab some chicken manure pellets, and then just sprinkle some in the trench, just like so. Just gives them a bit of a feed. There we go. Get a few more out. I mean, a couple of handfuls. Give them a good dosage because they, they are greedy plants, potatoes, so they will like a bit to feed on. So there we have it. A bit of a fertiliser there. I've also got some other stuff. I'll just go it to you now. So for the older subscribers of my channel, you'll know that for a couple of years I've used these spuds galore. And basically it's like them blue bubblegum millions. They're really fine, really thin little balls. And basically that has just got very high percentage of fertilizer the MPK is 12 11 18 so it's quite high it's got extra magnesium and trace elements as well to help bolster the potatoes when growing so basically same principle I'll just give it a bit of a dusting in there I don't usually put a lot a lot of this spuds galore fertilizer on the mm -hmm. the new potatoes because it's mainly activates for the the ones what are in the growing season, the longer, so the main crops and the seconds. That's all I do really. Just a bit of a dusting and that's plenty. And there we have it everyone. Potatoes all launched up now. Look at those great, lovely big homes. Nice and straight. Really good bit of covering on them potatoes. And that should do then till I harvest them. Like I say, I like to get it all done at once. Because potatoes can be a bit of a... A challenge not not just planting but physically it can be quite annoying keep going back every three or four weeks just to earth a bit over the top of the leaves so once I start poking through if there's a, if there's a threat of a frost I'll just cover them with a bit of fleece so I don't need to mess about anymore but there's a good lot of covering on that so it should give me a you know a nice bit of taters so there we have it then so I've got the rest to plant there we are pedal and javelin and a few more foremost so that should take me halfway down the garden, probably give me about four rows of first dailies. And then probably the weekend I'll get the main crops planted. Right then, that's all the potatoes done. And they're all homed up, ready. Some nice long rows in there, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'll probably have to put a couple more on the other side of the allotment just to use the taters up. As I say, I've got quite a few left. So another couple of rows and that'll be plenty. I've got one, two, three, four, four rows of new potatoes, five rows, and then the rest will be main crops, so like I said, there's plenty to go at. And then I'll just keep them watered when it's dry period, and apart from that, I'll leave them to it now. I'm an allotment now, and I'm coming to plant the apple tree. So I've just dug a hole there, big enough, just take the root ball. What you're supposed to do is really soak it in water for a couple of hours just to make sure you get as much moisture into the roots as possible. That looks big enough, that. So I'm quite happy with that. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put some chicken manure pellets in the bottom. Just so it's got a bit of a mulch, uh, a bit of a feed, sorry. And that way it can provide a bit of food when it starts sending down those big long roots. So I'm not going to go too daft, just sprinkle a few in like so, just like that. And then the apple tree can sit nicely into there before I backfill. So if you pop the tree in there, but make sure all the roots are thinned out and they're also sprawled out as long as it can go, because that way it can uh, 
go down deep fan water reservoirs and also it'll anchor it down well into the soil to prevent it from rocking over in the wind now the trick is to plant it up to where it's been grafted so it's roughly around about there so that wants to be about your soil level so what I'll do is I'll heap all the earth over firm it down with my foot and then I'll show you what I do then next thing to do now then is to put this supporting stake in and basically that will help keep the plant growing upright and also keep it secure like so I've got a, a, a tie wrap thing just here and to tie it to this plastic thing here it's just really used for the uh, for the young trees just to stop anything from eating the bark but it won't be necessary down here so I'll skip that part and there we have it apple tree all planted what I've done is I've just put a bit of drain pipe just at the side it's only just for a temporary short fix and basically what it does if you push the uh, drain pipe right down to the bottom as far as you can get it and then water through the pipe there it basically takes all the water right down to the roots and further down which makes the roots of the apple search for the roots rather than coming up towards the surface so it like kind of like forks out and then anchors down rather than coming up to the surface so as soon as it gets established I will remove that and then just water it as normal but flowers coming on anyway so I'll just run you through what it was, it was a grafted tree from Marshalls and there you go family apple, James Greve and Falstaff and they're basically uh, dessert apples really so they've all been grafted onto their own particular branch you can actually see some of the tape still where the bud was there where it's been grafted but it's a strong looking tree very healthy, very pleased so fingers crossed all being well my first attempt at planting and growing an apple tree is a successful one I'm up at the main greenhouse now and it's time for these cauliflowers to get transplanted they are getting quite big and they've got four good true leaves so they're well ready for going into some bigger pots so these two inch square cell trays and what I've done is I've made a bit of a hole there, an incision using this dibber, you can use a pencil or any other cylindrical thing, even your finger as long as it's big enough to take the root ball next I've got one of these tools here and basically it's for just prising things up out of pots without damaging them too much you get them from Wilco's for a couple of pounds and this is what you're left with what a nice plant lovely so then let's drop it in firm it in, you can actually go deep with these just to make sure they uh, they're sturdy firm them in like firm ground of the brassicas so just treat it as you would normally like so so I'll just do the rest and I'll get back to you shortly so that's the first tray all done all the cauliflowers potted on so I've got a couple more to go yet but that's the general gist really as soon as it gets to about four true leaves I like to plant my brassicas on because I don't like them to get pot bound and not being able to uh, spread the roots out they're not ready to go in yet but the uh, probably will be in about what three weeks time or something so in another week or so I'll be hardening them off ready to go into the open ground which I'll be preparing down the element very shortly so just before I leave the greenhouse and I just want to show you the results of the broad beans I sowed in the pots and that's the result three out of all those I'm putting it down to uh, bad seed because I did use 2015 seed so that's obviously contributed to a poor germination rate and actually this all look, doesn't look too good either so all in all bad results but after a week or so I had a bad feeling so I decided to sow a few more um, different variety different compost and there's your results you see so you know by just having a bit of soil and better seed 
the quality and difference is unbelievable. So there are the peas at the bottom, they're ready for hardening off soon, they can go out into the open ground again. And then I've got things like the broccoli, kale, sprouts, red cabbage, they're all coming up lovely. I've had a good success, successful rate with those this year. And there are the cabbages again, about the same stage as the cauliflowers and they're doing very well. My own sweet peas, there's a few missing but happy enough as long as I get some. And then the tomatoes. What a difference a couple of week makes. So you see, I had them in those type trays on the windowsill. I had a bit, a bit transplanting and put them in this, this greenhouse here, what I got from one of them B&M stores. 13 99 Extra heat, nice sunny position, extra light, and there we go. The smell is beautiful. So it just shows how it brings them on nicely. So that's it then for this episode. All the planting is well and truly in full flow and I'll be going back down the allotment again this weekend to continue the progress and hopefully get as much in as possible, get everything prepared and sorted. So I'll bring you some more footage as and when I'm down there and later on in the forthcoming week. Thanks for watching, see you again soon, bye for now.